Silvia Rodriguez Sabater. Thanks for being here on such a beautiful day outside. Um, I changed my title uh, slightly, and I lost my paper. I think you took my. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, I changed my my title uh, slightly from the original. I was going to talk about uh, both indigenous cultures and minority cultures in Spain, but I'm going to just focus on the indig indigenous cultures um, today. Um, in case there are some, some people from not from the United States, just to uh, remember that Spanish is the most widely studied second language in the United States. You have a few numbers here from the Modern Language Association with relation to uh, enrollment on college campuses, and also uh, some numbers related to the number of uh, students that study abroad in a Spanish-speaking country. Um, we're in Arizona, we see the, the Hispanic influence. There are uh, over 50 million Hispanics in the, in the United States. 30 million of those um, speak Spanish according to the census. Um, since I'm talking about textbooks, I'm going to use the definition from Hatos. Uh, textbooks are commercially available books which are used in language teaching programs and are often designed for a wide range of clients. So that, that will be the, the definition I'll be, I'll be using. Um, it is widely accepted nowadays in the study of second language acquisition that learning a second language cannot be separated from learning the culture, right, of the target group of speakers. In the case of Spanish, those are many cultures, right? And that learning, as we've seen this morning in, in uh, Tony's excellent uh, presentation, the learning culture can start at the very beginning at the introductory level. Um, textbooks, as much as we would like to break loose, right, from, from them and to create our own very creative ac activities of uh, the D kind, like we, like we saw the, this morning, the fact is that textbooks are still central to the educational process and that they introduce the linguistic system and the cultural cultures to, to, to the students and they have immense power in uh, influencing students' perceptions of the second language learner. And not only that, for novice teachers as well, we just hold on to, to, to the textbook. And even no so novice teachers at um, higher education, maybe unlike uh, K through 12, nowadays there are a lot of adjunct professors and um, we need to also cover a lot of stuff, right, really really quickly, and uh, whether we like it or not, the textbooks are central to that learning um, process and to the uh, activities that go on in the classroom. Um, culture, as we know, is an essential element of second language learning and can be an objective in itself for second language enrichment as well. So it's part of the second language learning, but also um, in itself, for second language en enrichment. There's been many common definitions of, of culture in second language teaching and learning, from cultural products to background knowledge to inventory of, of items, and you can list them, right, like music, places, food, sports, famous people, history, artifacts, geography, etc. In a previous study, I found uh, a previous study, I'll give you a little bit more of background. This is an uh, ongoing investigation, and today it's just a very, 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 very small part of that investigation. I'm looking at um, textbooks in the introductory and intermediate levels for <coughs> Spanish at the college level, and what they're doing with culture. Do they help hinder what, what's there for learners and for teachers to, to use in, in, in the classroom and when they're exposed to, to, to Spanish at the very beginning, right? So I was, I'm, I'm looking at what cultures are highlighted most. And in, a, in part of this investigation, in, a, in, a, in another study that I did, 
um, we found out that it was Mexico, Spain, the US, and Argentina, the four countries that were highlighted the most throughout the textbooks, first year and second year. It didn't matter what editorial house it was, whether the authors were from the US, from Spain, from Peru, from whatever. Those were the four main countries that were highlighted. Sometimes Mexico, sometimes Spain, and then sometimes Peru, sometimes Argentina, right? Um, and I was also curious to see what would happen with the indigenous cultures. And um, in first year introductory books in that sample of 19 um, textbooks, 11% of the cultural um, activities, readings, anything that was deemed cultural um, was 11% of that coverage of the culture. And in second year, um, intermediate textbooks, it was 17.5, so a little uh, higher. So in, in, in particular today, I, I want to um, uh, see what type of cultural information these second language learners receive with regards to this in the indigenous cultures of, of Latin America. So there are two main questions. Which indigenous cultures of the Spanish-speaking countries of Latin America are well represented in the textbooks? and which themes are learners exposed to both in written and visual representations. We, um, some of us attended yesterday the symposia on, um, on landscapes, right? And the value of the images, especially for beginning learners. So that's why I went beyond the text and also look at the types of images, especially in first year and second year. Um, students still don't have that much of the language. They rely a lot on the images. So I contacted five um, major publishing houses in the United States, Cengage, Pearson, Wiley, McGraw-Hill, and Vista Higher Learning. We're all very familiar with, with those. And I asked them about their two best-selling introductory uh, textbooks, and those create the, the sample one of them only sent one, that's why I ended up with 19 instead of a nice 20. Um, that's life. So those were their best-selling books, and that I use that as my criterion because those books then represent, most students use those books than any other books, right? And you probably, if you, if you teach Spanish at the college level, you recognize some, some of the, the textbooks and the year edition that, of the one that, that I used. So I, I read the publisher's introduc introductions, the editor's remarks, everything that goes you know, in the teacher edition before you start with, with the first lesson and to find out if indeed um, they used, in their theoretical background, they highlighted culture and they all did. So they all mention a strong cultural component as part of the design of the of the textbooks. So I read all this, the textbooks, marked the passages and visuals with cultural references to indigenous cultures of Latin America, and that I ended up with 259 <coughs> chapters in 19 books. Um, following uh, Yamanaka, Ramirez, and Hall, Chappelle, and, and some modification of what some previous work I, I had done, I, I that, that was the way I, I did the analysis. I analyzed the themes in uh, the written mode. I counted texts that were longer than one sentence. And in visual mode, those were all the pictures, drawings, graphs, tables, maps, reproductions of rea realia, any of those uh, visual things. Um, some of my findings are that there are more references to indigenous cultures in second year textbooks than in first year textbooks, that there are also more visual references, so more pictures and maps and photos than written text, both in first and second year. And the main cultures that were mentioned were first the Incas, then the Mayas, then a general 
Andean cultures type of thing all grouped together, and then the Aztecs. Um, those were the four main by a lot. Um, then there was also something else was emerging that at first I was not looking at. I was looking for specific cultures, right? There were all these other texts about general situation of indigenous peoples in Latin America, how they battle globalization, the value of the land, but it was not specific on one culture and there were like the, the role of, of religion and the land and what was happening with water and with bilingualism and losing their languages and those, those types of things that they didn't fit neatly into that was happening to the Incas or to the Mayas, but an overall type, type of thing. So for the Inca cultures, those were the themes and they repeated and repeated themselves. Um, Machu Picchu and Cusco, that was like number one. Then the Incan civilization in general, more from a historic type of point of view. Customs, many texts talk about marriage customs too, the writing system, ceramics, textiles. Oh, something happened with my PowerPoint here. Oh no, I did it on a Mac and now it's kind of weird. Sorry about that. Um, the Inca road and mail system, the Inca emperor, the empire, indigenous markets, those were the types of things. And this was the, were the types of pictures too. This is not exactly a picture from the, it's not the exact picture from the textbook because those are copyrighted. These are pictures that are free to use and, and share, but they're very similar to the ones that were appearing to in, in the textbook. And this gives you some, some samples of, of what, um, since you cannot see it really well, let me see if I can find it here. Um, La Civilización Inca, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, paraphrase a little bit in English for those of you who don't speak Spanish. So this is giving a little bit of information about the Incan civilization, some um, historical dates and, and references, and always accompanied with, with a visual, sometimes several visuals. There's a, another, another example. This example has to do with um, the communication system of the chasquis or uh, messengers that would take information to the whole empire, similar to the relays in the Olympics, right? How would they would go to, to different places. And that it, it mentions that, for example, from Quito to Cuzco, um, which is about 2,000 kilometers or 1,300 miles, they would even do it in five or six days. So it's talking about th those types of things. So those are the types of cultural, um, find the cultural um, material that the students are exposed to in first and second year books. Um, another example, okay, another example from the Maya culture um, has to do the Mayan civilization in, in general, like from a historic point of view. Um, a lot has to do with different types of ruins, so Copan, Chichen Itza, um, Kital, uh, etc. Uh, traditional clothing, textiles, weaving, the Mayan calendar, numbers, and Mayan sports. Um, so this is, for example, from another of those textbooks. This has to do with uh, the system of, of numbers and with a nice uh, visual as, as well. Uh, another example from Mayan cultures that has to do with uh, weaving. And from the Andean cultures, um, there were three cultures, but many times they were lumped all together into Andean cultures, Chipcha, Quechua, and Aymara. And most of the themes that emerged when looking at all those um, uh, texts and pictures had to do with weaving, music, foods, different types of legends, and the, the Hablada de Oruro that seemed to be um, the main topics that, that appear. So for example, in here is talking about uh, food and how all Andean dishes have um, corn as one of their bases because corn has been in, in the Andes for over 4,000 years. Another example has to do uh, with the music and the different types of uh, instruments. 
and moving to Aztec culture, the themes that emerge in the textbooks were uh, mostly about the history and the Aztec empire, a lot about chocolate. Um, Moctezuma, uh, Chichimeca dancing, wars and uh, ruins. And in this, this uh, example from uh, Arriba, is talking about how while trying to dig to create another uh, metro station in uh, Mexico DC, um, they just found an Aztec um, pyramid and they had to, to, to stop the construction. And this is one of the examples about chocolate and the visuals. As I said, they're not exactly the ones from the textbooks, but very similar because of uh, copyright uh, issues. So um, not only like the Mayas ate the chocolate, but the value of chocolate as a, as a means of uh, paying others. Um, this is the, the areas I was telling you that surprised me the most was that it wasn't specific about one culture, but themes about the general situation of the peoples of Latin America. So it talked, um, many of those texts are found more in the second year textbooks rather than in the first year textbooks. The indigenous subjugation, the indigenous life and globalization, social exclusion, the historic role of Spain in the current social situation of indigenous people, the, the role of the land, uh, indigenous languages, different indigenous voices, many texts about Rigoberta Men Menchu, Fior about Dolores Cucango. And here you have uh, an example as well about um, different types of, of oppression and how uh, the indigenous people are trying to find um, their own voice and identity again in this world that is really uh, globalized. Another example had to do with uh, the languages of uh, Latin America, not just uh, Spanish, those that are native uh, to the lands, and always accompanied with different types of maps, uh, etc. And a nice example that in Mexico, for example, there are about 300, 300 um, native uh, languages and the most um, uh, speakers are bilingual. So um, just a, a brief conclusion from just this small part today. Um, second language textbooks at uh, the college level, at the introductory and intermediate level show that students are exposed to indigenous cultures of Latin America. It's not just this Hispanic culture, whatever that thing is. Um, more references, there are more references to indigenous cultures, especially in text and especially to their situation, social issues, economic issues in second year textbooks rather than in first year textbooks. There are more visuals than written references for both levels and there are more complex social and historical topics at the intermediate level. Uh, to recap the main cultures mentioned were the Incas, the Mayas, the Andean cultures, and the Aztecs, and um, general situation. Um, since textbooks, even though we're trying to break away from them and use them more as resources, we still need to have textbooks in class, right? It's the first thing the student asks you after they get the syllabus. Is this the right textbook for this class? Uh, since textbooks are one of the primary sources of cultural information for all learners, but especially for beginning learners. Their culture content becomes the cultural knowledge they're most likely to gain in those beginning years. Um, the references to indigenous cultures then gives them the message that they're also important and relevant in the study of Spanish, that it's not just Hispanic, whatever Hispanic, big word means, that's for another day, um, that they're also relevant in the understanding of today, in Latin America uh, today, um, because of a general is interest also in globalized issues today and concern also for uh, human cultural rights of all, all peoples. So um, 
I want to continue studying all this, this um, area of culture in textbooks at the beginning levels. Um, and I want to also look more in depth to non-Spanish speaking cultures in, in, in Spain. That also interests me because I'm from one of the non-Spanish speaking cultures in Spain, I'm Catalan. Um, I also would like to analyze the frequency of how they present that presentation, whether it is done in, more in, in Spanish or in English at the beginning levels, and if that influences their understanding. Um, also explores the, the themes from a products, practices, and perspectives approach from um, ACTFL, and um, finish more with the study of instances for learners' cross-cultural awareness and type of reflection uh, exercises, and um, maybe later continue with online supplementary materials because this was only done with the textbook. No ancillary materials, no other videos or anything else. So it was just pictures and text in the actual um, textbook. And those are some of the references, and thank you very much.